So hello, uh, my name is Lucia de Almeida and I'm part-time professor at the Florence School of Regulation and tenure assistant professor at Wagner University of Research. So I'm here today to present to you the academic paper creating with uh, two of my colleagues, Fabrice Esposito and Josefina Van Sarbe on the governance by indicators. Or better put it, the lesson learned from the mistakes founded in indicators. So to do so, this paper gives a close look at the EU retail energy market for index. So let's first of all started by asking uh, the question, what do we mean by governance uh, by indicators? So in simple terms, governance by indicators uh, process that is a process that simplifies whole data about complex social phenomena through the quantification uh, and to condense this information in easily comparable index. So major examples that included uh, World Bank's Bedouin Business Educator and Indicators, the World Bank in Good Governance and Rule of Law Indicators. So they are the most well-known indicators. So the positive side of indicators is that it has been considerable capacity to influence policymakers, investors, and civil society. So since indicators have precisely the purpose of simplifying complex data, it can speak to a non-expert audience and pressure governments uh, and regulators to change legislations and legal frameworks. The negative side of uh, indicators, on the other hand, is that the way indicators are produced could give its creators some margin of discretion on how to define what is a good and what is a bad regulation. And by doing so, there are not many studies on the measures that could test the reliability of these indicators. So this was the reason why we decided to develop a case study specifically on the EU retail energy market barrier, and that's, which is the result of a project commissioned by the European Commission. So the EU EB project is specifically uh, on the creation of barrier index, identifying barriers to entry in the retail market and more specifically in the household market of energy suppliers across the EU. And the idea is to hang in member states on the basis of eight indicators, member states and Norway. The Marine Index uh, was published in 2021. It is composed of basically of two general reports covering the results and the detailed methodology, and plus 28 land national reports uh, on data specific of these member states. So why we have decided to conduct um, a deep investigation specifically in the Marine Index. When the Marine Index was released, one element that intrigued us was the difference between uh, what you found between the Marine Index and the HH Index of the retail markets, specific, specifically for households. So what is the HH1 Index? So the HH1 Index calculates markets concentration and is used to determine market competitiveness. The discrepancies between these two index when referred to countries like Denmark, Netherlands, Portugal, and others cannot see, uh, as you can see highlighted in the presentation, cannot be conclusive about the reliability of the Bari index. But of course, it motivated us to investigate the reason why there was that differences, and um, which move us to the second step. So the second step, uh, it was to how to conduct this research. So to, to test the reliability of the indicators, we separated in two parts. The first part of the research focused most on the methodology used in the develop, for the development in the Berea index. How the, which kind of variables they would be considered, how e, these variables would be uh, normatized, and so on. The second part, it was basically the, we concentrated in looking the data collected in member states that was based to hanging these member states in this, in this indicator. So this third point of our assessment of the index methodology is the fact that the report of the Maria uh, index project itself disclosed the information that it relies on the OECD GCR handbook on constructing composite indicators. This, this handbook is basically defined good methodological practices for building indicators. So the good practices identify 10 methodological steps to build the indicators, starting from theoretical framework, as you can see, passing by the selection of variables, 
unveil what you call the presentation and visualization of the hanging. So the barrier index begins by defining what barriers are, are as you can see this, uh, and it moves to a second step, which is the even more crucial for in your case, which is the selection of variables. In the second step, the BA project develops a categorization of barriers to enter and effectively compete in the retail energy market. As, as you can see from this, this, this figure, it's a bit uh, it's, it's small, but it, it shows to you that the report in 5 45 individual barriers, they classify into nine subcategories groups and four barrier blocks to compose this, uh, this list of variables. What you identify actually, it is not clear in the report how these 45 individual barriers were selected. It said that the project conducted interviews with a considerable number of stakeholders and review policy reports, but not necessarily how this data was codified to ensure the outcome of 45 barriers. What you can notice nevertheless is that some barriers are based in subject variables, such as a consumer awareness or interest of switching suppliers. And then when we compare with other barrier index, for instance, the one that was developed by Acer uh, and published by Acer until 2016, we can notice that in this case, the Acer uh, uh, index used more quantitative numbers collected uh, to, to construct the barrier index. For instance, the number of pr precisely the number of switching of consumer switching suppliers. About the index is still about the index method or the methodology of the index. One thing that we observe it besides the, uh, the selection of the variables is that EU project considers five selection criteria. What is selection criteria? Is how this 45 per index would be uh, reduced in numbers in a way that you would select the variables that is more comparable and more switchable to this kind of indicators. So uh, for the EB project, they define it that the extent which individual barriers, uh, they identified the barriers that was basically solvable by regulation, relevant, easily to interpretable and understandable by the target audience, reliable and available. And they classify this, uh, this data according to a classification of plus, tri triple plus, uh, two plus, plus and mi minus. What we will observe is that actually is that there are some conditions that were not considered by this uh, uh, selection criteria. And these are criteria that, for instance, is fundamental uh, criteria as, as defined by Aristotle. It's the aqueous, timeless, and comparability of the data. They are not considered in the selection criteria that needs to be well highlighted. Of course, or looking at the index methodology, it's not enough to judge if the one uh, indicator is reliable or not. It can, of course, uh, raise increased criticism and awareness of the for those who are using this index. So it's the reason why we move it to a second step of the research. And the second step of the research it was to assess the data collection in the national reports. As I mentioned before, the index barrier is based on um, 28 reports covering all member states plus the region, uh, the retail market. And what we did in this paper was to choose two countries in which they could be at some point comparable. And you choose to look at the Dutch and the Portuguese national reports for the reason that these countries are basically in the, they have a similar size, number of population. And as well, they started the liberalization process at the same, at the same stage. The second step, it was to choose, uh, of addition to choose the countries, it was to focus on the indicators that were presented the largest range of difference between points that you classify between countries and identify there were four of them. So you could see there was a market floor proposal by price regulations, the regulatory burdens and unpredictability the competitive advantage of vertically integrated suppliers and the comparability of the offers. So you took these four um, uh, variables that were key to define the ranking 
and we look at precisely the data used that would uh, that was justify the classification of one country as a zero or as a 2.9, as 2.2 or 5.9. When you look at this data of collection of national reports, we identify some, uh, some issues. And these issues of collection of data was the most relevant one. One of you can consider that I have already said at the beginning is that the report doesn't use the HH index as reference and doesn't justify why they are not using. But there are things that are more complicated. For instance, is the, the use of data on uh, uh, misleading, misleading data in the sense that uh, they would use a nation of the, the data concerning retail marked not including households, when including households indistinctly. In this you could identify in Portwell that the data they were using was not necessarily about the retail market of electricity based on households, but actually it was the data, exactly the data that would be the retail market, including industries. And we all know that when it comes to competition of retail market, the reality of the market for households and non-households, it's very different in terms of access to the market, uh, number of competitors and so on. Another thing as well that we uh, draw our attention, it was when you, they, they classify, speak about the market for, for closed by price regulation. And one thing that they reported says is that the government that the Dutch market would not regulate the price, but actually the Dutch market, they have an instrument in which allows the Dutch regulator to perform a general overview of the reasonableness of the contractor conditions, including prices, which of course is an instrument that can be comparable, not about um, EU determine the prices, but actually could be, it's determined to it's at some level of control of prices. And it, this does not make any distinction. So the conclusion of the paper is the following. It's definitely, uh, we concluded that methodologically there is some unclarities, but it, when it comes to the data collection, it was the most concerns that it raised us. So the idea it was to, uh, the conclusion of the paper was to raise it a caution to say, to say the very index is a collection of important information, relevant information for the regulators. When it comes to the hunting of decision of how to change regulations or investors who would decide to go to one country or to, water, to the other, would need it to be uh, more cautious in considering that, that, especially when it comes to the data collection, it was there was some uh, some mistakes that needs to be considered, and of course that would undermine the reliability of the very index. So the conclusion of the paper here, and I think the most important part of the paper is to say, okay, what is the uh, the learning lessons from it? What are the policy recommendations? And when we speak about about indicators, the first thing that comes to our mind is the importance of transparency. The transparency is the duty of index uh, of builders to disclose all the meaningful choice made to build that index. Transparency is not necessarily a problem in the Bari index, otherwise we could not have access to these informations and we could not have had our conclusions about the Bari index. So the question is, is transparency enough? Because many of the uh, literature when it comes to the governance by indicators they indicate transparent as the key element uh, of or the most important element to ensure the reliability of the indicators uh, or the accountability of the indicators. So the paper moves a bit further in asking, okay, what is, if we could, uh, if there is any possibility of turning uh, the pitfalls in the methodology, at some level, the builders of these indicators are accountable for this. And we analyze from perspectives uh, in the sense that for, I think two aspects is very important, is that when it comes to the methodology, uh, uh, there is some discretion of building methodology. Methodologies is harder to, uh, to make them uh, accountable if there is a discretion of determining what is a variable, what is a relevant and what is not a relevant variable. But then when it comes to data collection, you need to have objective criteria in terms to say like, what is uh, a number 
of concentration in households and non households. And then when there is mistakes and misleading information from this side, here is that where, where we can uh, be speaking about accountability in terms of liability, in the sense of asking and questioning to what extent the building indicators could be liable for those actions. And I think the last point and final conclusive point of this presentation is that uh, there are ways and lessons that we can learn that actually are very important, especially for, for regulators and next experiences about indicators. These are some of the misleading information uh, that was uh, used as a data. They could be solved by simple communication and coordination with the regulators. Uh, uh, in which you would create a peer review process of indicators where regulators or uh, uh, stakeholders would have the chance of, uh, of access these information and have a say on, on whether they see mistakes or not much in advance when they come out and be published. Once published, it has an effect. So I would like uh, to thank you for your attention and, and I hope you have a chance to read uh, the paper published in the Policy Energy.